So it's currently 12.20 p.m. on the East Coast, and oh boy, we are selling off yet again. We have the S&P 500 down 1.2%, we have the Russell down 0.8%, we have the NASDAQ 100 down 2%, and the Dow down 0.4% as the VIX is up over 12%. So I want to go over the market, some stocks that I'm looking at, my thoughts on everything going on. So sit back, relax, hit the like button, subscribe. We're trying to actually get 25,000 subscribers by the end of the year, guys. So make sure to subscribe. Check out my Patreon if you want all my moves in the markets. And you also could get five stocks free from Weeble and 50 bucks from M1 Finance. All of that, the Patreon and the free money are linked down below. And with that being said, let's get right into it. So right now, SPY is completely collapsing. We broke under the critical force. 65 level that I've been talking about here on the channel and now we're holding on to 460 by a thread and let me tell you guys if we break under 460 which if you guys take a look at this trend line that I'm drawing right now 460 was resistance in the beginning of this month now it's support I'm telling you guys if we break 460 this is probably going to go down and test the lows from earlier this month at about $448 per share meaning there's a pretty big $12 gap from 460 to 448 on the downside that will most likely I'm not sure for sure Sure, nobody knows for sure, but most likely um, there's a decent chance, let's put it that way, that we do fill the gap from 460 if we break 460 down to $448, meaning there is going to be about potentially two, two and a half percent more downside if we break 460. And of course, as always, we're going to break this down more in my video later on today. So make sure you guys subscribe and uh, be in tune for that because we're going to cover how the markets ended up playing out from now 1230 to 4 p.m. because we do have another three, three and a half hours left of action. And with the crazy markets that we've been experiencing, that is more than enough time to, uh, to get a lot of crazy action. And we all know no, the Fed meeting started today on Tuesday and tomorrow we have Jay Powell giving a press conference, Q&A, all that good stuff. We're going to hear about interest rates tapering. We're going to hear the timeline behind the tapering interest rates. When are they going to be hiking? We're going to be seeing the dot plot. We're going to get a lot of information. So I'm super excited about tomorrow in terms of the markets. And that's kind of why we're uh, seeing a sell off, right? There's a lot of uncertainty. People have no idea what's going to happen. Well, I guess they do have a little bit of a sense of what's going on, but Still, people want more clarity, investors, traders, retail, institutional investors, whatever. They pretty much everybody wants more clarity on what is going to be happening here over the next three, six, nine, 12 months. So what do you guys think? Drop me a comment down below in the comment section. Make sure to hit the like button as well if you guys are finding value in this video. And if you're down in the markets today, hit the like button. So this video should probably get a thousand likes because most of us out there, unless you're shorting this crazy market, um, we're all pretty much down. So <laughs> you know, let's talk about some stocks that I'm looking at now amidst all of this volatility and all of this selling. Stock number one is Smith & Wesson. Guys, this stock, I was looking at it earlier today, diving into the financials a bit, looking at some ratios. This stock is disgustingly overvalued, or rather undervalued, undervalued. The P.E. right now is is a three. Could you believe that? It's literally a three PE. Let me pop it up and show you guys here. The ticker on this is SWBI. And overall, over the past couple of months, this stock has been getting destroyed from $39 per share back in the end of June. Now it's sitting at 18 per share. So it's down well over 50% almost 60%. Um, and the stock is uh, coming off of a great 2020. If you guys know Smith & Wesson, a lot of people bought their products. Go look at their products. If you guys don't know what they make, I mean, you probably do know at this point, uh, but a lot of people bought their products during the uh, lockdown, the CV, the whole crisis we went through. 
A lot of people were buying their products, right? Shooting the stock price up like crazy. And now, a couple months later, like we talked about, it's down 60%. The stock has finally come back to earth, right? And if we look on this three-year chart, the chart looks pretty good. You know, we hit 39 40 bucks. It was way overbought at that point way overbought and now we're right by the 180 moving average as we're trading at about 18 per share and we're holding an uptrend on this three-year chart and on the max chart which shows all the data uh, available here we're noticing it's above both moving averages as well and the pullback that we're seeing it's down 60 percent roughly it's simply a healthy pullback so at this point in time SWBI is an $870 million market cap. So it's relatively, it's it's a relatively small company with a 3.3 trailing 12 month PE, which is just insane. I haven't seen a PE that low in, in a while in terms of, a, you know, at least the stocks that I've been looking at, right? PE is super low and they also pay a decent dividend, 1.8% dividend yield. And I looked at their balance sheet. The balance sheet looks pretty good. They have more assets than liabilities in general. And if you look at the current assets over current liabilities, they have more current assets than current liabilities and they're able to pay off their current liabilities with the cash that they have right now, cash, cash equivalents, and short-term investments. So their uh, balance sheet looks pretty good. The chart here looks pretty good, and it's relatively, it's a relatively small company that it's pretty un- that is pretty undervalued in my personal opinion right now. So I might be buying some SWBI guys, you know, as more of a, a value play here over the next couple of weeks as I dive in and do a little bit more of a deeper dive. And if you guys want to see a deep dive video on this stock, let me know down below in the comments. I would probably make that for you guys. Why not? So that's one that I'm looking at here, SWBI. I'm also looking at TM, Toyota Motor. What I'm noticing overall on the four-hour chart here in terms of technicals, we're seeing a clear-cut ascending triangle, right? We're seeing um, an uptrend. We've been uptrending for a couple of months here, and we see clear resistance at about 188 to 190. You know, we got hit there uh, back in June, August, September, just recently in the middle of November, and, uh, and in the beginning of December, we've gotten rejected at about 190, and we're still squeezing deeper in the triangle um, as we're getting rejected. So ultimately, what I think could happen here is TM is going to break out. We're going to see a leg up, and this could end up going 195, 200, maybe even more. And we're noticing they have big electric vehicle plants, as most car, if not all of them, all car manufacturers have big plans right now. And they announced on Tuesday today that they're going to invest 4 trillion yen or about $35 billion in developing battery powered EVs between 2022 and 2030 in a bid to mount a more serious challenge to rivals such as Tesla, GM, Volkswagen, Ford, and more. And a lot of the uh, money will go towards the batteries themselves with uh, the Japanese company committing another half trillion yen, $4 billion roughly to the technology on top of the $13 billion that they previously announced. So they're investing heavily in this space, guys. Whether or not they're uh, um, behind, it's still a lot of money, right? And let's be honest, they are a little bit behind the other um, competition, but still, they're making an effort here. And the automaker currently sells just a few thousand battery electric vehicles each year as of now, but it now plans to roll out as many as 30 new models by 2030 with the aim of selling 3.5 million such vehicles per year by 2030, which that's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, the growth trajectory there is pretty huge. So I'm looking at Toyota TM over the next couple of weeks, months, and honestly, this whole week that we're in now, I'm going to be watching it as the charts look good and uh, they're looking to invest into their future, which is great. And the last stock that I'm looking at, which is not necessarily undervalued like SWBI is and Toyota Motor, I mean, their PE is a nine, uh, but they don't really grow much. Um, at all. Same with Smith and Wesson. I mean, they have years where they grow a lot, like 2020, but they have years where they shrink. You know, there's regulatory 
problems with SWBI, which is why the valuation could be low, which again, we'll talk about that if I do a deep dive video on. Um, the third stock here is Amazon, which again, is not really over or rather undervalued per se. And I don't know if it's ridiculously overvalued either. You know, I wouldn't say that either. Um, now that it's down about $400 per share from the recent all time high. In other words, it's down 12%. It's in correction territory and the chart looks pretty good. I think this could be a buy the dip opportunity. And as always, I'm not telling you to buy the dip. I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. You know, the chart looks pretty good. We're up trending. We have clear resistance at 37.75. So this kind of looks like an ascending triangle as well. And at this point in time, we're oversold. We're down 12%. Like I said, if we hold the uptrend like we have many times over the past couple of months, you know, every time we've gotten down to test this trend line, we've bounced. If we repeat history, this could end up seeing a relief rally here from 3,300 back over 35, 36, maybe 3,700 per share. So these are some stocks I'm looking at, guys. Smith & Wesson, Toyota, Amazon, and those are some thoughts on how the overall market's playing out right now. And uh, I'm kind of just waiting to see how the Fed meeting plays out. I'm very interested in tomorrow, what's going to happen. We're going to be it's going to be a jam-packed day tomorrow, guys. We're going to have a lot of videos talking about the Fed. I'm probably going to upload three videos on YouTube who knows? Maybe more. Probably not more, guys. I'm not going to go that crazy, but we're going to be talking a lot about it. So what do you guys think? Drop me a comment. Make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe. Check out my Patreon if you want all my moves in the markets, my buy, sells, call outs, morning update videos, more access to me throughout the day. All of that good stuff's on Patreon. Link down below, or you can simply go to stasurfest.com slash Patreon. Make sure to also get your 50 bucks free from M1 Finance and your five stocks from Webull. If you guys didn't know, they upped that recently from two stocks to now five stocks. And all you have to do is deposit any amount of money. You can literally deposit five bucks and get five stocks from Webull. All of that is linked down below. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. As always, keep crushing the markets. Stay safe out there. Peace out.